Hey folks, this is David Wong, and today I want to show you the ZK Bitcoin project that Ivan and I just released. Uh, ZK Bitcoin is here to allow you to verify zero knowledge proofs on Bitcoin. And uh, basically, you can sort of read the, the white paper to, to, to understand, but the gist is that we have a minimal L2 uh, where some committee uh, controls together a wallet on Bitcoin, and they can sign transactions to unlock funds on these wallets by doing a threshold signature. And if you send them proofs and they can all verify it and the proof uh, verifies, uh, they will unlock your funds on Bitcoin. So it's sort of a minimal layer two application on top of Bitcoin. But the nice thing if you read the paper is that um, the nodes are pretty light because they don't have to know about Bitcoin to, to, to work. And uh, it's, it's a pretty simple uh, and nice protocol. Uh, specifically, it verifies proofs uh, from the circum slash snarkjs stack, which is a pretty well-known and, and uh, used uh, stack for zero knowledge proofs. And so we assume that if you want to use this, uh, you have circum installed to compile uh, circuits and snarkjs installed in your path as well to verify proofs or prove um, uh, your circuits. We also assume that you have a Bitcoin wallet installed locally or somewhere and that these environment variables are exposed uh, so that we can communicate to your wallet. This is important because we'll use your wallet to fund the transactions to deploy ZK apps. So ZK apps are zero knowledge smart contracts uh, or to use ZK apps. And finally, if you want to in install the CLI, we don't have binaries yet, but you can use the Rust cargo package manager with this command and install the CLI. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a demo of the, the CLI, but briefly, there, there are two types of ZK apps. There's stateless ZK apps and stateful ZK apps. And the stateless ones are ones that basically are single use and that you deploy and then you uh, redeem or unlock once. And the stateful one uh, basically posts their state on chain and whenever you use them, you update the state. So you don't fully consume the ZK app. Uh, you might withdraw some or deposit some, and then the state might change. And uh, of course, every time you want to use them, you have to, to produce a proof. So I'm gonna, I mean, you can read this, this readme to, to learn how to uh, deploy or use a stateless ZK app. Uh, same for stateful ZK apps. Um, or get information about ZK apps or least deployed ZK apps. So this is kind of a CLI explorer. Uh, or uh, you can check the, the demo I'm going to give you. So here I want to first show you a stateless example, and maybe I'll only show you a stateless example. Let's see. Uh, and a stateless circum circuit is basically a circuit that has one public input. Here, pub, one public input. That is called truncated transaction ID. And the only reason to have it here is that it authenticates the transaction um, that if someone wants to spend that ZK app, it, it authenticates their transaction. And if we didn't have that field, which is a hash of that transaction that spends a ZK app, then someone could take a proof and use it to spend the ZK app themselves. So this is the, the way to authenticate the, a transaction uh, as part of the circuit. And you don't have to do much about it. It just has to be here. Um, and here, this example is pretty easy. We have a digest that's hard-coded in the circuit, and we're making sure that um, uh, the pre-image that you can give as witness, uh, and if you hash the pre-image, it gives out that, that digest. So here we have a, an assert, basically. So how do we deploy that? Well, we have a ZK BTC command. I'm going to assume that you've, you've installed the CLI using that command, right? Uh, and we have a deploy ZK app command. Uh, and just complete it uh, to deploy my stateless circum circuit with a um, an amount of 500 satoshis and so this is what i'm gonna lock let's do it uh, i'm getting some information and now i have a transaction id and i can even uh, check it out on the explorer um, and get more information oh yeah, yeah it's here now and you can see it's unconfirmed, blah, blah, blah. And then we have the, the ZK app here. And you can see that the ZK app is basically, um, that's the ZK app or, or the locked uh, value, the, the 500 Satoshis under the public key of the ZK Bitcoin committee. Um, 
here we have some change and here we have um, the, the verifier key, which is basically a hash of the smart contracts of the compiled uh, circum circuit, uh, if you want to think it uh, in this way. But this is the this is how we uh, post the, 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 the circum circuit on chain and how we authenticate it. Uh, all right. So now let's go back to uh, to our demo. And uh, we're going to use that transaction ID here. And basically, whenever you want to refer to a ZK app, you will use uh, the transaction ID that deployed the ZK app or, or, the, or the, the last one that used the ZK app if it's a stateful ZK app. And so I can use get ZK app with that transaction ID. And uh, it gives me the transaction ID. It's the first output this time uh, with a locked value of uh, 500 Satoshis. And this is the, 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 the hash of the compiled circuits and it's a stateless ZK app. All right, so what we can do now is that we can uh, try to use it. And so I'll, I'll use the command use ZK app and I have it here, so that's nice. I'm gonna use the transaction ID. Oop. Where is the transaction ID? I'm gonna use that transaction ID uh, with the circuit uh, that we want to use. And I'm passing the proof inputs. This is if you've if you've used SnarkJS before. This is the the format uh, that that SnarkJS expects when you want to verify a proof or produce a proof. And this is the public in, the the witness. Sorry, that we were gonna pass. And the witness here is one because I know I created that that CK app myself, that circuit myself. I know the pre-image. And also I want to basically span it to this address. That's the recipient address. And we can send it. It's gonna send that to an orchestrator who's gonna send that to all the committee, all the nodes, and they're gonna verify the proof. So this is creating a proof, you can see it. Um, I don't know if it's written somewhere. And, and it work. Transaction um, that's spent, the thing is here. We can look at it. Um, so if, uh, let's look at it. You can see that it spent these 500 Bitcoin that were in this transaction ID, 71 uh, something, that was uh, 71 something A0, 71 something A0, right? The first, the zero uh, out outputs. And we're spending it and we're sending, uh, what did I say? I wanted to, to send it to, um, to uh, this recipient address, K6, and we see it K6 here also. We successfully um, spent that ZK app. And uh, notice also that uh, not only we have the change that goes back to us because we funded that transaction, but we also paid a fee to the uh, ZK Bitcoin committee. All right, so this is how uh, you use a stateless ZK app. And this is kind of nice because uh, basically it allows you to have much bigger uh, programs we're not limited by the Bitcoin script anymore and we can have much bigger circuits and more complicated logic. And in this case, uh, we can also have privacy of the inputs that you're using. Uh, here we had a pre-image. If we had a similar circuit or a similar program on Bitcoin, then uh, revealing that pre-image uh, would have been bad because someone could have front run us and uh, observed our pending transaction and basically uh, use the same pre-image to spend it before us. So here we, we, we have a witness, everything's private here, so we, we hit this. Okay, so um, let's try to do a stateful example. So stateful circuits are very similar uh, in that they have this truncated transaction ID as public inputs, but they have also uh, uh, more public inputs uh, and one public output. They have the previous state that you want to, to use to create a proof, the new state as public output, so you're, you're doing a state transition. And they also have two other public inputs that allow us to deposit Bitcoin a month in and withdraw Bitcoins a month out. And so this is how we tell the contract, I want to um, change the, 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 the amounts that is locked in here. Okay, so 
Let's try to deploy a stateful zcap, shall we? Deploy zcap, um, and now we have the stateful one, and now I need to pass some initial inputs. I believe I can do this. Uh, let's see if it works. But actually, what is, uh, yeah, my initial, my initial state, is it initial state or initial input? Uh, stateful. Initial state, initial state. My initial state is just gonna be one, and uh, whatever that means. Well, actually, let, let's do 500, like that reflects the amount that's here. Um, it deployed, okay, nice. And actually, no, you, if you look on the Explorer, uh, you'll see that the up return is, um, is much bigger because it should have, well, not that much bigger, but bigger than 32 bytes because it has that uh, state uh, in it, because it's a stateful app. And now let's try to, to use it. Um, so let's try to use this one. And then um, transaction ID, let's put that. And then how do I use it? Yeah, same circum circuit path, um, the stateful one, I need to pass the proof inputs. And here again, this is uh, either witness stuff, but at the very least it needs to have amounts in and amounts out. So I understand how much I'm putting in and putting out. I'm gonna put 500 in and I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll get 1000 out. Wait, I only put 500. <laughs> Actually, so I'll, I'll put nothing in and I'll, I'll get 500 out. So this is a withdraw. Do I need to pass anything else? Oh, recipient address. So I need to, to make sure I'm sending that to someone. Uh, let's try, oops, transaction ID. What did, what did I do? Amount is not a U64. I might have, I might have used uh, something incorrect. Oh. Mon is now U64. Maybe we cannot do 10. Let's, let's try 500. Huh. I'm wondering why zero doesn't work, but uh, maybe, maybe something we need to fix. So anyway, um, now we have a transaction that's deployed. Oh, wait, sorry. It's not deployed. We, we just used the ZK app and we can check that was the ZK app. I withdrew, um, the comment was this one, right? I, I deposited 500, withdrew 500. So the state is not gonna change and uh, it's kind of hard to see the states. Actually, we have a comment to do that, just that, but the state should not have changed. Um, yeah, the state is still 500 because if you remember, the state is just uh, the previous state plus the amount deposited minus the amount withdrawn. And so these cancel each other and the previous state was 500. So we haven't changed anything here. Um, so yeah, things worked out. Anyway, this is, uh, this, I just wanted it to be a short demo. You can check that for yourself if you want. If you're more interested, you can read the white paper uh, or, you know, if you have ideas or if you have issues using this, uh, you can post some, is uh, some issues here. If you want to contribute code, we will come po uh, pull requests. Uh, currently, we only support circuits up to 2 to the 17 constraints and only Circom and SnarkJS, but there's no real limitations here. We can easily increase uh, that size, that upper bound, and we can easily support uh, more systems like uh, GNARK proofs uh, with, their, with their Plonk implementation or uh, Cairo star proofs and, and so on. So that, that would be interesting. If, if there's any interest that we're, we're willing to, to do some work there. So let us know if you have any feedback or if you, if you have any input and so on. All right, thanks for listening.